So this is a new painting that I'm starting. I've planned this for several weeks. I've been doing the drawing and planning the values and just how I'm going to do this. I cropped the scene in quite a bit. And I actually did a, quite a bit of Photoshop work on this. And I uh, layered my distance scene of this man playing the piano with closer shots of his head and his hands so that I could really see the detail. So I did some Photoshop elements work and did a lot of planning here. The title's going to be And the World Fades Away because while he's playing, so whether you're writing or playing music or doing artwork, you just get caught up in that world where nothing else is important to you and that's what this is about. He was in a park in New York City and there's all these people around. He had his piano outside and I just thought it was really wonderful. Um, but the, the figures in the background needed to be really secondary to what was happening with him. I paint and then I look at my reference and I paint and I look at my reference so there's a lot of hesitation with a live video like this so I sped it up just a little bit but this was shot as a regular painting video and it just shows you how I'll wet a bigger area and then I go in with more saturated color and then I just keep working wet into wet to build up the values and then where where I really need a hard or distinct line I'll wait until the papers dry if I need to there is some masking fluid on the edge of his glasses and I'm not sure where else I don't have much mask on here at all I'm just avoiding the areas that I want to stay white. Like I say, the hesitation is where I'm looking at the reference because I would like this to be really photorealistic for his face and his hands on the piano keys. And the rest of it can be, you know, a softer interpretation. To really focus the viewer on where I want you to look, all the warm colors will be on his face and his hands, and the background will be very faded and bluer. And that's just a trick that I use, and everybody can use. I put some masking fluid on his beard, and then I didn't like it, and I took it off. And then there's a little bit up on the top of his sideburn that I left on, but I'm having trouble finding anything that masks as fine as I really want it. And I think that a lot of times the best thing for me is to just paint around a shape. When I blot the paper, what I'm doing is I'm staining the paper. I use transparent staining colors. So I'm blotting the paper to limit the amount of time that that staining paint is on there. So it's not like I'm just blotting color off. What I'm doing is I'm staining the paper and then I'm blotting it for the amount of stain I want to give the paper. Just like a blueberry stains our clothes or teeth. And I keep building up the values and like I said where I want to really hard sharp line I'll wait until the papers dry so I took a detail shot from a distance and then I took up close photos trying to stay in the same position and I did remarkably well on this on this one I was able to 
play the reference of his hands on the keys right over the wide shot that I had taken and I photoshopped I photoshopped it in and I could just lay them on top of each other. It was <clears throat> just a really great, um, I don't know, Photoshop thing. You might be able to hear the tree frogs that are um, chirping outside of my window because it's a summer evening and uh, we have tree frogs. We live in the country. They're pretty loud to me. I'm sure you probably can hear them. So I'm almost done with this little painting session. Just wanted to show you my process and show you a painting that I'm really excited about. And, uh, you know, stay tuned for more of this painting as it comes along. Thanks for watching.